Okay, welcome back. Uh, so today, uh, today is more of a project than not a restoration. Uh, so today I am going to be taking a uh, really old rotary style phone and I'm going to be taking uh, an Arduino, putting it in here and then making it so that every time you lift up the handle and speak, uh, it records what you say into it into uh, a micro SD card and you know ends the recording and each time you pick it up it's a new recording and you can kind of save messages to a phone like this with you know more modern technology uh extremely similar concept to more commercial devices that you'd find at weddings and that's kind of what this is for uh it's I'm making it for a friend who's getting married and uh i offered to try and make it save them a, a few hundred dollars uh for the day of so I have this really old style rotary phone. I found it at a thrift shop for a couple bucks. Um, you, you know, find these however you find old technology. And what we're gonna be putting inside of it is a Teensy board. Uh, what we have in here is a Teensy 4.0, although I believe they have a 4.1 revision nowadays. Uh, so we have the Teensy board, which is a very tiny Arduino style microcontroller. Uh, and then we have an audio shield for it. And this is where the audio will be put in and uh, saved to the SD card. There is a, there is a headphone jack for uh, audio in and then a micro SD card for you to put your micro SD card and you know save audio to. And then when you're done, you'll extract it off of there. Uh, for that, I have just generic uh, micro SD cards. I got these off Amazon. I think these were on sale for like $9. Uh, but price will vary on that. We have a battery, because I would like for this to be battery powered and not you know, plugged into a wall uh, if I can help it. So this might at the end not be used, but I would like it to be. Uh, this is from an old project. There's already a charging circuit on here from Adafruit, and then uh, this is a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. So based on the math, um, I hopefully should get about 18 hours of battery life. I'm not sure. My batteries never seem to last that long. Uh, and then I've got a bunch of headers and, and connectors that we'll be using to assemble everything. So first step is to take this phone, take it apart, uh, and we'll walk through sort of what the wiring looks like and kind of figure out how to go from there. I just realized now that there's a sticker on the bottom that says Bell System Property. This is, this is quite old. Very easy to take apart. Put this off to the side. Okay, so aside from some cobwebs that I'll vacuum out, um, the plan is, is to keep this actually mostly intact. Not so much because we're gonna be using the electronics in here, but more because uh, one for me, preference of the weight of the thing uh, makes it feel a bit more you know, premium to put together. But uh, we're also gonna be using the terminal the, this terminal block right here for a lot of uh, our connections. There's a really good guide on YouTube from somebody doing this exact concept that I will link below because it's a big inspiration uh, and, and you know, guide for how I'm doing this. I'm kind of taking exactly what he did doing that. Uh, and he's got an open source, open source code base on GitHub uh, that, I'll, that I'll be using and I doubt I'll be making any modifications to it. So. Looks like this has been attempted to be fixed already. Um, so the general plan is we will take the microphone from here, which is just under um, you know, screwed base like this. All this needs to be cleaned. Um, we will take the connections that are coming from it, which looks like one red wire and think that's now oh, there you go. Yeah, one red and one black wire. So I'm trying to do all this with as minimal soldering and, and you know wiring as possible. So from the corded cable, there is uh red, white, white and black. The white so probably for the speaker portion of it. But uh, we'll look at that later. They run into here. These Terminal blocks, I'm guessing red and white here is probably your common ground between these two. And then black is your microphone signal and white is your you know, uh, speaker signal. We're gonna be taking at least these three terminal blocks here, connecting them to the audio shield of the Arduino, which 
will be connected via heading header jumpers to the uh, TNC. I keep saying Arduino. Um, and then the TNC will have code on it to do all the audio processing. And that's it. That's the whole thing. It's three wires. Um, so I'm going to pause this, or I'll make this little jump cut it. I'm gonna have this cleaned a little bit, and then, uh, you know, I'll be taking a little put it apart. We're gonna take this old Cat3 cable off because you can't use these phones today anyways. Um, so I'll be disconnecting that and taking it out just to free up some, some leverage here, so. First things first, I'm gonna get a photo of all of this, and then we'll come back to one that's a little bit cleaner. Okay, I've actually decided I'm going to clean this at the end when uh, I've confirmed everything works. But for now, we are going to take off the uh, this um, Cat3 wiring right here. So The other thing that I forgot to mention that we'll be using, uh, which we'll find in just a second, is the um, rest switch. I actually don't know what this is called. The one, when you put the phone down and these little divots pop up and then you put the phone down and it you know, goes ching, that's this. So this will serve as a, as a switch. So when it's pushed down, the TNC knows to uh, stop the recording and um, you know, wait for another one to happen when the switch is lifted. So. Right now we are just removing all the wires that the signal cable uses, which I think that's it. Okay. So that's that portion. Um, we know we need these three for speaker and microphone, which we can take a look at again. Yeah, so the speaker is just too white and it's apart at the moment, but uh, let's look. So it's hard to see at this angle, but all of these, we have two whites, green, blue, more whites and greens, and they run there. A lot of this is riveted together. As much as I'd love to take it all apart and clean it and get a better view of it. Uh, don't entirely know that I can. There's this braided wire right here that connects to a lot of these that my assumption is, uh, and because they're soldered, my my guess is that they are part of like the control part of the uh, controlling circuit. So this that's what I'm assuming this big block is right here. Um, this makes it difficult to find which of these are the switch. And as soon as we know that, uh, we can we can get started on this. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who say. There's a way easier way to do this, but I, I can't even find spots to put uh, my multimeter for testing contact points. So uh, I've determined I think this one connects to this little assembly here. If you can see this a little bit when I move the button, this goes in. And then presumably it makes contact with this copper in the back and then that triggers the signal. My guess is these two control whatever little circuitry is in here and tells the phone it's ready to pick up another, uh, you know, receive a phone or receive a call. Um, but that doesn't happen unless this connects, which only connects when these two are connected, which we can only connect here. It still doesn't make much sense. So for for the sake of making this a guide, like an actual guide that hopefully people can follow. Uh, I'm probably gonna cut out a lot of what I was just rambling on about. Um, what we're looking for here is 
two terminal contacts on this terminal block that are one or disconnected. Hmm. Kitty. Um, we're looking for two contacts on this terminal block that are dis one or disconnected when uh, the switch is up and closer to two zero or, you know, beeping when they are connected. So this is just, do not. So this is just a lot of trial and error um, that I have not done beforehand because I do all of my stuff on a whim. Um, but I have a general idea of what to look for. So we'll just try a bunch of things. Okay, first, first set. So we have this wire right here and then what I believe to be a common ground right, right back here. Um, so if I touch these, so I've, I've picked up the phone. I'm speaking. Good morning. Uh, then I push this down, phone call's done, it closes. So I might have to change how things here work slightly, at least in the code. I depends if we're looking for a signal that's on or signal that's off and whether or not you're listening for a message. But we found what we're looking for. I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie because it's the only one that I am a little unsure of that. Like it's the only one that's not immediately clear, right? The rest of these are color coded to the microphone and that's easy to see, so. Okay, so I know what we need. Our next step is assembling the Teensy and getting that ready for, for use, so. Okay, so here's how I'm going to at least set up, set up the Teensy. This section is probably entirely optional depending on how you order your Teensy or whether or not you want to do this section or not. Um, I ordered these things without pins because um, I believe the one with pins at the time was actually not available. So that, that I mean, it's perfectly fine. So the, the plan here is Teensy on top, audio shield on the bottom. I will stick these female headers into the audio shield section and this, as I accidentally did while taking it apart, uh, these break very easily, or at least the, uh, the male portions do. I will trim these to size uh, put them in here. I will then take these male connectors. They'll go through the teensy. Then that lets us uh, sandwich them together. Makes it a little bit easier to keep these things together. I'm gonna take two of these right angle ones and they will go right here in the front uh, of the audio shield. So right here is our microphone connection. This microphone, which is your positive and then ground for the microphone. And that's our, that's our input. Um, I misspoke with, with how the uh, stop chewing on wires, man. Um, I misspoke with how the microphone jack works. The Teensy comes with its own uh, pinout sheet, which is appreciated. There's not one for um, the audio shield because you will connect them together and uh, they share these. So we'll come back to this with the code because we might need to make some changes to their code base. Uh, but that's the plan. So I'm going to trim all of this. I will solder things together. We'll, we'll fly through that because, again, you can order these from uh, PJRC, uh, the manufacturer of these, with pins. So you could just push them together and then you don't really have to do any soldering. Uh, all kind of depends. So I'm going to get these uh, wired up and then we'll go through a little bit more in detail. So the board is all wired up. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Um, it, I had some difficulty getting the pin soldered to the Teensy itself, but the audio shield worked just fine. Um, so the board is wired up. This is how it looks. Uh, because I didn't use uh, what do you would call a double, double header, header, I guess a double length header. Um, I didn't have those on hand. I, I, bought, a, I bought a very cheap set of, of connectors. Uh, buy cheap stuff, expect things to work like they're cheap. So because of that, we need common ground for at least uh, two things, I believe. So if you look at Playful Technologies video, which is the one that I'm linking below, because it's quite literally what I'm basing this on. Um, I'm changing a few things that he does. Right now, I'm not planning to use the speaker in the headset. Uh, it'd be cool to add in like a pick it up. It says, please leave your message after the tone. Um, and then, you know, it listens for a recording. Uh, right now I'm not using the speaker. So I'm only concerned with the microphone 
and switch. So the microphone goes here, right? We have microphone on the left and ground for microphone on the right. Then we have ground for what will be our switch. Um, and then he's got, he also has a button to uh, relay the playback into the headset. So it's like a self-contained unit. I'm not concerned with that. I'm gonna rip the files off of the SD card. Um, so in this case, we only need ground, which is here on our pinout sheet, this top left one, or I guess bottom left one, and microphone, and then a signal wire for the headset, which uh, according to his diagram goes, I believe to um, GPIO zero, zero pin right here. Um, that's really easy to do. We just, we're gonna solder two wires to those and that'll be it. Um, if you were right wiring a speaker, or if I might, I like myself, might add one later, um, and you aren't using a double stacked header, and you're not using some form of chalk block or um, common connection, you could use the grounds on the um, on the audio shield. So I'm just gonna show you that real quick. So ground is on the bottom left here, and there's a ground header right here. And because everything is connected through these headers, they connect. So if like me, you're using these style of headers and you want to eventually have to share a ground, there are multiple options for that. Uh, just something to keep in mind. So let's move on to wiring up the phone to this. All right, so I've wired up everything for a small test. We've got um, ground going to the common ground for the switch and then um, white for the switch going to the terminal that we discovered earlier through our continuity testing. And then I've got the microphones going to the microphone pins just based off the coloring of the cables. Um, I'm actually going to do a quick test just to confirm I've actually got the right ground. So if my assumption is right, red for the microphone is ground and black is, so red for the microphone, black for the microphone. I've got the colors kind of mixed up here, but red should be ground. Yes. And then black is also connected. I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna plug this in. I've gotten the Arduino flashed. Um, I'm not gonna go too in depth, if at all, on the code or setting this up because you should go watch Playful Technologies video because I'm not gonna just use his code and not tell you to go watch it. Um, but watch his video, look through the GitHub repository. There have been some changes that the community has made that have been um, well documented. So I'm gonna follow through that uh, and it'll answer questions better than I ever could with one recorded video. So I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna have the serial monitor up to watch it and I'm gonna you know, play around, and double check that everything here is wired up properly. Hello, this is me recording into the phone. Test, test, one, two, three. I hope the microphone works and stopped. All right, so that's stopped. I will unplug the Arduino. I will pull off this. Okay, so I've plugged in the micro SD card from the Arduino. We've got it. Uh, plugged into a, a adapter, so it reads a USB drive. We've got two recordings, one because I left it up by accident, and then this one that should have my voice on it. So we will play, we will copy these over, and then we will play them back and see what happens. Okay, so I didn't have the microphone screwed in for that one, that's fine, and then I screwed it in here. And we get nothing back. Now there's a chance that the microphone is wired backwards. That's an easy test. Uh, we'll try that real quick. This is another test of the recording. We'll see if the microphone works or if it does not. And stops. So here is our new recording. This is another test of the recording. We'll see if the microphone works or if it does not.
Okay, so it's really quiet. This is another test of the recording. You will see if the microphone works or if it does not. Okay. Uh, okay, so as we just heard on the computer, um, it does work. So the microphone works. It's really, really quiet. Um, a few things come to mind. The microphone itself could be this. I'm assuming this phone is about 100 years old. Roughly, I don't have an exact date on it. Um, this could be, this could be broken. It's the most common and you know simple explanation. It could be really dirty. The contacts in here where it connects could be extremely worn. The wiring could be bad. Um, the grounding could be bad. These cables I'm using could be bad. Uh, it could be a whole host of things. So, what I'm going to do. Or a few things. I'm going to replace this wiring I have here. Uh, I'm using I'm using these terminal connector cables you'd get with that like terminal kit. Um, they're not the most high quality cable, and they're not very big. Um, thickness matters here because ground may not be big enough to hold you know the grounding signals that have to happen. So I'm going to replace those. I will. Mm, replace ground, which is this red one here for the microphone. And I will clean the speaker with some uh, rubbing alcohol. I will do all of that and then we will come back. Okay, so I've just finished replacing uh, the wiring for the microphone. So black is now properly ground and green is our, our signal for it. Um, I didn't replace the ones for the switch I, I said I would that it shouldn't matter uh, and then I just finished cleaning the microphone my suspicion is that this just isn't this just isn't good um, it's old right uh, so it's old meaning that it's technology used to make it probably wasn't all that great compared to what we have today and then it's old in the sense it's probably degraded so it's back together let's plug it in turn on uh, turn on the serial monitor and then we can try again and I'll hold it up closer to my mouth as well this is a test after having cleaned the microphone and replaced the wires for the ground with a thicker more confident wiring Peter Piper picked up peck of pickled peppers all right all right so here is our most recent one everything has a date time of not right uh, but I'm sure we can fix that. And what does this one sound like? Okay, so it's not any better. I wonder if there is anything in the code to account for volume. Um, I will read through their documentation in the video and we'll address some things. Okay, so I've been tinkering with this for a couple hours trying to figure some things out. And during all of that, I've done a few things. I have hooked up the speaker, uh, which is going in this case to just uh, the left pad underneath. And then I replaced all of the separate grounds I was using because they all shared one ground. So I'm using one of these for now. It's just kind of loosely screwed in there. Um, and I modified the code that I was using a little bit to boost the gain on the microphone and uh, change a few other things that some of the people in the GitHub issue sections had, had suggested to get things a little bit working. So I don't have it hooked up to my computer at the moment. It's plugged into my power strip. But if I push down and stop the current recording and start a new one, you should hear the message, uh, the greeting message that plays. And then we can record it and we can review it on the computer later. Speak clearly and leave your message after the beep. Right. So much louder when it's in your ear, not when I'm trying to hold it up to a camera, but we can record, um, sorry, we can review uh, some of the recordings later. But for now, my next step, I'm going to take the battery that we're going to use and I'm going to, you know, get... Um, I'm gonna get a, a cables and stuff made so that I can quickly connect it to the teensy and then this whole thing will be self-contained and not need 
uh, USB cord. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so I've soldered the power cord to a switch um, and then the JST connected to that. Uh, plan is to take the back of the phone, slot the power button right where the um, Cat 3 cable used to come out of, like that, and then I can turn it on and turn it off. Uh, not just yet, but I can plug it in, turn it on with the switch, and everything starts up. My plan for putting this together is, um, I can't find my electrical tape at the moment, but what I do have uh, is vinyl for my Cricut. Uh, so I've got at least one sheet cut out right now. I'll put it about right here. And then the Teensy and uh, Audio Shield will go here. And the battery will go right about here. Uh, and then I can connect all the wiring and everything. So it's right here and it's all, you know, neat and pretty. Uh, just, I don't know, hot glue or something to hold these in. Um, but to do that, I'm actually gonna take out the phone you know, the, uh, the the bell part of it, uh, because it's not going to be used. And in reality, having the space to put things in neatly is more, uh, more worth, has holds more worth to me than keeping it a part that won't be used. Uh, and it's not most of the weight. Most of the weight is the bottom and then this control block. So I'm gonna take this out. I've got the cables here. I'm gonna wire it all up and then, uh, I'll be, I'll be done. Um, before that, I'm gonna clean this. So I'm gonna take this apart, uh, unplug a few things, and I'm gonna clean the base and I'll put it together. But I'm not gonna show that on camera because this isn't, uh, that's not part of this. So when it's all fully together, uh, we can, we'll come back for the conclusion. So I have it uh, all assembled for uh, what is going to be the mostly finished product. Uh, this is screwed back in. I've taken out the cables that is for it. Uh, I have a design ready that I'm going to cut on my Cricut out of this vinyl just to make it better. I couldn't get this, uh, well, I'm assuming it's paint marker off. Um, and I don't want to risk using like lacquer thinner or acetone on it. And I might take this stuff off. So I'm going to cover that up with something as a sticker. But everything is in here. Um, I use effectively five minute epoxy. Um, in very light amounts on the battery and the audio shield so that everything is in place, but enough that I could get like a um, plastic sponge underneath and just pry everything out, but it is secure enough to be passed around at weddings and such. Um, on the back, here's the power button. I'm gonna turn it on. We'll hold this down as if it was together. Uh, and then I will let go, we should hear it, we'll leave a message, and then we'll go look at it on the computer. I'm leaving a message as a test to see how this performs uh, when used. So then I will turn it off. There's no power going to it. I will then, uh, I'm gonna screw this together, put it all back together in one piece, and then we'll go, uh, we'll go look at it on the computer. Well, actually, in order to look at it, uh, I either have to take the SD card out or plug it into the computer. So let's get the SD card out and then We'll see what it sounds like. Okay, so here we have the SD card. Uh, these are some of the recordings. Here's the greeting. Uh, the greeting was actually made using an AI service. Um, I believe it was resemble.ai. I'll have it linked in the description below. Um, I just used one of their default voices and used text-to-speech, so you could generate your own. Uh, we'll grab the latest one off here because that was what we used, and then we can play it back. how this performs uh, when used. Okay, so there is some clicking in the audio. Um, I've been tinkering with things all day trying to figure out the best way to handle that. But uh, let's go back to the phone and I'll discuss kind of what the plan is for that. Right, so there's some clipping and, and artifacting happening in the microphone uh, on recordings. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, the biggest factor in that is that the microphone is just old. Um, in reality, 
if you're looking to do this uh, yourself with, with a phone, they do make phones that look just like this, that are either props or, um, you know, they're, they're functioning, but they're you know, up to date with modern technology to be used as landline phones. Um, you'd be better off probably buying one of those as opposed to looking for something at a thrift store. Because uh, again, I, I don't know how old this phone is. Um, so I don't know how old, I don't know how old the speaker and microphone are in it. The speaker works really well, the microphone not so much, and I don't have a spare that works. I tried, I tried this one and I couldn't get it to function. Um, so the biggest factor in this is that the speaker is just old and, and probably damaged in some capacity. Uh, so replacing it would be the, the thing to do. And I'll, I'll keep an eye out on some speaker that obviously fit in here, uh, that I could, that I could wire in, but, uh, other than that, there's some things you can adjust the gain in the code so that there's not as much clipping or distortion, which is something that I've been tinkering with. Or um, you could adjust um, the volume at which it's recorded. There's a whole lot of settings that you could change in order to get better sounding quality. The biggest factor in all of this is going to be uh, how, how good is the microphone you have in a phone. So... Uh, Kind of a lesson learned, kind of a, I just kind of have to come back to it moment. It, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, uh, it's more of a proof of concept at the moment than an actual, uh, I'll, I'll use this at a wedding kind of thing. So for now, I can still turn it on. I'll give it a second to initialize and I can pick it up. And I can leave a message on the phone. And then when I'm ready, I'll take it off and uh, I'll, Take everybody's nice messages off the phone and, and give them out to, to people who need it. So, uh, it's been a fun journey. Uh, I did this whole thing in a day uh, with with a lot of errands and stuff scattered throughout. So it's a really simple project. Uh, I've never touched anything with audio that much before. It's it's not really a forte of mine. So it's a lot of learning. Um, and and you know debugging things that I'm not entirely used to, like looking up what a ground loop is. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I hope this has been a bit of a guide for some people, I, and not so much as like a how-to step by step, but as a like, oh, I'm doing that exact same project, and I am curious how other people are doing it kind of thing. Basically, all my other videos, but not as uh, not as hey, look, I'm repairing something more. I'm trying something new and building things. So. Thank you for watching and, and uh, watching through this. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, because again, I'm not an audio person and I don't code a lot of Arduino things. So uh, if you have any questions or feedback, uh, please, please ask. Um, otherwise, I will leave everything in the description that I used, uh, mainly Playful Technologies uh, repo and his video. They'll be listed at the top down below. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, come by next time.